All right, and again, for tonight, I doubt that, really doubt that we're going to be winding up with anything in the way of measurable precipitation until we get into the end of the week, and that is looking like we may see, again, some chances of rainfall, but we are going to be seeing the potential for, again, some areas of showers out there, and anything we can get, that will come in very handy as we see the potential for more rainfall arrive until then i really think we're going to be seeing the potential for some problems where it comes to more wildfires and we saw that plenty of it over portions of the area for today so be prepared again for the potential of some more wildfire dangers coming on through depending on how long it's going to be before we see anything in the way of decent amounts of rainfall out there all right, we are live on Facebook and on Twitch TV. Everything is, appears to be working properly, so let's go ahead and get going with weather overtime for tonight. I'm Chief Meteorologist Austin Onik. You can email me at aonik at wdef.com. It's on the screen there on Twitch TV. And you can find me at the website. I haven't been able to post that for Facebook, but you can always find me out there someplace on one of these various locations. We are looking, again, for some rain to be in our semi-near future. That, again, is going to be the worst part of anything going on outdoors. We did not pick up anything uh, for today. and We've only got about three days left, three days and change left in the month. So for right now, if we are going to make up the deficit that we have for the month of November, we're going to, and, and the, for November and into December, we're going to have to pick up like one and three quarter inches of rain per week before the end of the year. And that is just to break even. So right now it looks like unless something radically changes in the forecast patterns out there, it's a very good possibility that we may be looking at the potential of a very dry year 2023 already again eight inches behind normal we did not pick up anything in the way of uh, really measurable amounts of rainfall yesterday kind of a light misty drizzle some areas did get something but we've only managed to wind up with about uh, 137 hundredths behind so we did manage to get maybe about a tenth of an inch yesterday uh, that was it when it comes to any rainfall so we are still in a pretty deep deficit for the year and we're going to need a lot more than that. High temperature today did not even hit 50 degrees. That's a good 8 degrees below normal. And we were below normal on the low temperature as well. Nowhere even close to a record high or record low. So not bad, all things considered, all the way on through. And we're not seeing anything in the way of moisture heading our way. There are some clouds down to our south for tonight. Uh, some areas of scattered light showers well back over toward Texas and some light snow showers wrapping around portions of the Great Lakes well to our north. We do not have much of anything showing up uh, in regards to rainfall for now. Tomorrow morning, uh, the best possibility for anything involving rainfall uh, or any moisture, I should say, out there whatsoever is going to be the potential of frost across the area. And that is something that we are going to have to watch uh, for travelers tomorrow morning. Fog at this point in time does not appear to be a major concern, but that could be an issue uh, into very early. Speaking of which, again, here's the idea for tomorrow morning. Make certain you give yourself a little bit of extra time. If your car has one of those remote starts, that's great, but go out, start your car, and get the defrost settings working all around your car. The idea of, again, periscope driving where you scrape off about that much ice off your windshield and just drive around like that. I saw plenty of that in Memphis. I don't need to see any more here, so please make certain you're doing the right thing and scraping the entire windshield clean. So that will take you probably at least another one to two minutes, and that could be, again, something that uh, if you clean everything off so you have decent vision, 360 around your car while you're driving, that could get you out of an accident by making certain you can see everybody else. But if all you can see is just this, then you really are not doing the best driving possible. And I saw a lot of accidents back in Memphis that were that periscope driving 
only led to some problems out there. So again, something to think about on that. Taking a look at the Chattanooga Zoo, uh, I believe Mondays and Tuesdays they do not activate the Asian Lantern Festival. And as of right now, being after hours, there's nothing to show. So we're taking a look back along 4th Street uh, over toward, again, the hospital and right along that area where the parking garage and everything else is at. So, for, so far, a beautiful view uh, from the Chattanooga Zoo for this evening. Uh, close to downtown, across the area from the uh, Bailey's Heating and Air Camera. Nice view of some of the tops of the downtown buildings lit up nicely as we go into the rest of the holiday. Going to be seeing, again, a lot more of those lights out there, hopefully, uh, with some clearer skies. Lee Point, traffic on the Plainview Outdoor Advertising Camera. A lot better traveling than what it was earlier. Traffic was backed up in all directions around this particular location. From downtown, a little bit quieter conditions from the Chattanooga Theater Center and the Speedy's Total Car Care Center camera. The holiday lights out on the bridge. Few folks out and about earlier tonight around Coolidge Park. Looks like a few people out and about here and there crossing the bridge, but outside of that, it is, again, a fairly quiet evening and uh, for tonight again doubtful to be seeing too much of a problem with any inclement conditions it's chilly out there we'll get to the temperatures coming up here in just a little bit from 2475 south central chattanooga right above the georgia line the chattanooga red wolf stadium tomahawk crane and rigging camera traffic in all directions moving along quite nicely at this time and I believe that is, okay, we've got a couple more here. So let's go back downtown for the News 12 studios on the Patriot Concrete camera. I-24 traffic uh, moving along quite nicely, going the speed limit and not seeing any problems with anything involving uh, slowdowns. Didn't see any construction going on at this point, so everything appears to be moving along very nicely. And from our Island Cove Marina and Resort camera, Highway 58, uh, Hunter Road area intersection north and east of Chattanooga. Beautiful night for stargazing. Got some uh, stars and planets showing up looking back to the west-northwest. So decently calm and quiet here. And the first clear night we have had in many a night. So nice to be able to see the moon and the stars back out again. Temperatures have dropped into the lower 40s. And it's a very good possibility we'll be seeing some frost again later on this evening so be prepared for that again in the morning and get ready to scrape that frost off of the area let's take a look again at what's going on with fires in the last about 24 to 48 hours the yellow and orange are the oldest fires about 24 to 48 hours plus the bright red indicates where the fires have just gotten going within about the last 6 to 18 hours a good portion of those over the Carolinas, Georgia, and back into Middle Tennessee. And these are all spot fires for the most part. Some of these back into Arkansas and Missouri. Some of those are the rice fields being burned off. But most of these are brand new spot fires detected by the Veers satellite uh, suite to be able to monitor stuff like this. So once again, we're looking at an increase in wildfires and the possibility of more of that causing problems where we are. Now, we do have the potential of things changing a little bit into the next couple of days as we see the potential for some more uh, rainfall taking place. This is a leftover system, stretched out black dashed line. It's called a trough, T-R-O-F, and it's just basically a stretched out area of low pressure. So this is going to go wobbling through the area and off to the east coast before washing out in the atmosphere. There's our last storm system out over the western Atlantic. Our next storm system with any substance to it is well back over the eastern Pacific and that's going to be heading our direction into the next couple of days. That'll be one of our next best chances for rainfall. It's not much but again we'll take every drop we can considering how dry we are out there. Let's go ahead and put this into motion and show you again tonight. Low temperatures easily back in the lower 30s. We're still under the influence of that colder air coming on through. So high temperatures tomorrow, and this computer model is taking the sort of more conservative approach and showing temperatures in the lower 40s for highs. Parts of the Cumberland Plateau and parts of the Appalachians, the Blue Ridge, back over into around the Shenandoah is going to be looking at some temperatures tomorrow 
not even over 50 degrees. Some places may not even make their way over 40 degrees. So it's going to be a very chilly day coming up. River Valley temperatures, high 40s, I think with enough sunshine will beat the computer model, what it's saying here. But it is going to be on the brisk side. We'll take a look at the uh, bus stop forecast here in just a little while. Another cold one coming up on Wednesday morning. Even more widespread frost possible there. Back in the 50s for most of the area, plenty of sunshine, a beautiful Wednesday coming up. Another frosty day starting off in the morning on Thursday with temperatures back in the lower to mid 30s. And then as we go into around Thursday afternoon, we'll start to see again the potential for uh, numbers topping 60 degrees with a few more clouds heading our direction and then some chances of rain well back off to our west. That'll be heading our way as we go into Friday. And then after that, the potential of some more rain showers coming up in the very long-term future. Matter of fact, let's see if we've got this geared up here. Chances of rain Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday not taking place at this point. But going into Friday, that's where we see the potential of some of the showers beginning over our area. And then slowly that area of showers continues off and on right on into very early on Saturday. Then things clear out a little bit, some higher elevation rainfall possible. Getting into Saturday night, we see the potential of some more rainfall starting, continuing as we go into around Sunday morning. And then that starts to clear out as that latest storm system comes on through. Another round possible as we go into Monday, and then we clear out and we see an area of low pressure, a very strong one here, dragging down a lot of very cold air. But for the rest of the week, outside of some higher parts of the Appalachians scraping out some of the snow, thanks to that moisture getting pushed into higher, colder levels of the atmosphere, and that'll be around next Wednesday the 6th, uh, that'll do it for the chances of rainfall and snow, for that matter, across the area. So starting on and staying on the very much on the dry side here but those two three four chances of rainfall out there that hopefully will give us a little bit more in the way of insurance against any wildfires starting up we'll continue again to monitor that so please uh, keep an eye on news 12 and we'll keep you updated as to what may be going on here's what we're looking for again for the semi near future on the seven day forecast we've got a very nice series of days coming up Chances of rain will move back into the area on Friday and then another chance late Saturday into Sunday and then another chance by Monday. So we've got, again, a few chances of some rainfall going on. Doesn't look like all that much, but it will be the potential of getting some of that rainfall in here uh, from whatever we get for right now. Best chance, I think, for the time being is going to be Friday and again on Sunday with about a 50% coverage chance there. Uh, that'll be our best bet. We're not looking at anything frozen. Temperatures will be very mild. Mild normal for this time of the year is about the upper 50s to lower 60s. So we'll be going above normal for the rest of the week and the rest of the month heading into December by this weekend. It's going to be uh, maybe just a little bit above normal, about five degrees above normal at this point. So it'll be comfortable. It won't be too warm. It won't be bone jarringly cold. It'll be just a little bit on the uh, normal side, maybe just above normal by a little bit, and that's going to be about it. So the good news is that what we're looking for for right now is just some chances of rain, and that's about it. No severe weather here, no winter weather here, so I don't see anything uh, in the way of major amounts of problems, as in second severe weather season peak for this time of the year. So definitely, again, some good news on that but if you got any outdoor plans you may want to think about some indoor plans again as we get into the next few days so that could be a bit of a concern for outdoor activities so please keep that in mind and of course we'll keep you updated on that the farther we go into uh, next week going from november into december where has the time gone been a very busy year it will be frosty tomorrow morning so kids at the school bus are going to need some protection against that won't be too much of anything involving wind but there will be a lot of frost some clearing skies about the time the first bell rings and then heading home river valley temperatures in the mid to upper 40s 
higher elevation temperatures will be, I think, much lower than this. So I would be prepared for a chilly for those kids who are bike riding or walking home. I would be prepared for a very chilly finish to the day. Not exactly frosty like what we're seeing at the beginning portion of the day, but at the end of the day, 40s, even a bit of a breeze out there is going to take the numbers down into the lower 40s to upper 30s, and that's going to be an uncomfortable situation uh, heading on home. So good news on that for right now. Uh, hopefully we'll get some warmer temperatures again toward about weeks in, but then that's where the rainfall potential comes in. So be prepared for some rain gear potential as we go into around the end of the week. Thanking one of our viewers, Helen Newsom, a view from somewhere in the Great Smoky Mountains, looking off to some blue skies between there and the clouds out across the area. Gorgeous view there. That's our West Shore home weather window picture of the day. And if you've got pictures to send to us so we can show them to everybody, please do so. Let us know at pictures at WDEF.com. Or you can just go ahead and send those to us by dropping them into the comments section on Facebook, X, or Instagram. Let us know where you were and what you were looking at. City, state, brief description is okay. Uh, you don't have to use your name if you don't want to. You can be anonymous, but just please give us a little bit of something to be able to tell everybody because we'd love to be able to let people know about that. All right, so for our Panaagua Auto Mall weather question of the day, available at WDEF.com slash vote now. If there is a tornado or hurricane approaching your location, what would the air pressure be doing? Would it be going up? Would it be going down? Would it stay exactly the same? Or would it be fluctuating up and down? This is an older part of the, the voting section from earlier, but the main winning, most popular question was falling. As the area of low pressure approaches your particular area, the pressure starts to drop as that area of low pressure moves closer to you. So that was both the most popular answer and also happened to be the correct one. We'll have a new poll for you coming up at about midnight, so stay tuned for that. You can vote in all of our poll questions. You can use the QR code here, or you can just plain go to WDEF.com slash vote now and vote in our next poll quiz. We'll be doing this at least through the end of the year for the weather questions, if I'm not mistaken. So go ahead and get set to vote, and you'll be glad to uh, have you along for everything out there. We're coming up on the end of the month, and this is an important month for those of you who are participating in this. I've done this a couple of times. It's called NaNoWriMo. November is National Novel Writing Month. So NaNoWriMo is the condensed kind of anagram descriptor. And if you're writing at this time of the month with only about three days left, you should be at about 40 to 45,000 words. So you should be closing in on that goal for later on this week. So a good opportunity to practice. If, you, if you've ever wanted to be a writer, this is a good challenge to take part in. Weather tomorrow, uh, but anything indoors would probably be your best bet because it's going to be pretty chilly. Dry, yes, but pretty chilly out there for uh, the rest of the forecast into tomorrow. So may I suggest the lobby of the Chattanooga Public Library is a very good place to go to. Got my uh, card renewed. My wife got her car renewed, uh, library card renewed this last weekend. So glad to be able to uh, have that ability. And thanks very much to the Chattanooga Library for doing the book sale they had this weekend. I got an autographed copy of Cab Calloway's autobiography. That was a really cool thing to be able to find on there. So thank you very much, uh, Chattanooga Public Library, for putting that on there. If you'd like to see Cab's inscription, head to my Instagram or Facebook or Twitter pages. You can take a look at what we saw there. So thank you very much uh, for that. It is, again, the time of the year where not everybody can make their way home because they are serving our country overseas. And some serving with NATO in the former Yugoslavia to where it's between midnight and dawn patrol in the eastern part of the Adriatic. Temperatures back in the mid-30s, winds are calm, so not seeing anything in the way of wind chills at this location. Other spots around the world are not quite so chilly. Heading off to the Horn of Africa, Camp Lemonnier, I hope I'm saying that correctly, or no wait, pardon me, Naval Support Activity in Bahrain 
at Muharek. Temperatures in the mid-70s, winds light out of the east-southeast, and it's just dawn patrol there, so we are seeing a little bit uh, cooler conditions, cooler being the mid-70s at this uh, particular spot. Heading over to Europe, into and around the area of Belgium, around the Eidenhoven area, Volkel Air Base, home of the 52nd Fighter Wing, uh, close to dawn patrol, temperatures back in the mid-30s. Winds are breezy, north at 15, coming in from uh, off the North Sea there. So we've got some uh, wind chills around Vocal Air Base in the mid to upper 20s or so. Even colder conditions a lot farther north, uh, way up there by that distant early warning line. Uh, Thule Air Base, snow reported with 10 degrees. Southerly winds at three, so not much of a wind chill, but it certainly does not take much uh, to cause a big wind chill in that part of the world. Back over toward Iraq, temperatures in what we can get of those numbers back in the mid to upper 50s with some clouds here and there, partly cloudy around Baghdad, Al Assad Air Base around 55 degrees, so not bad and missing a lot of data elsewhere out there. Let's see if I can, if this is the correct one. This should be for the Horn of Africa in Djibouti, uh, around the area of Naval Expeditionary Base Camp Lamonier. I hope again, apologies if I'm not saying that correctly. 77 degrees currently in the Horn of Africa and 78 heat index at this time. Stay tuned to News 12 because over the next several days and weeks as we go through the holiday season, we want to bring this to you to let you see what is happening out there uh, around the world so you at home can feel a little closer to those who are serving our country out in the big wide world and so we'll be bringing you more of these whether with the troops are segments as we go through the holidays and into the early part of next year because again it's a long ways away at this time of the of the year so it's nice to be able to see a little bit of something that maybe gets you a little bit closer so uh, stay tuned to news 12 we'll bring you more about this uh, over the course of the next several days and weeks and proud to bring that to you and again thank you to those who are serving our country overseas real quick again for those in our viewing area who would like to attend severe weather training be a skywarn spotter DeKalb and jackson counties alabama your weather training session from the national weather service huntsville will be coming up next tuesday december the 5th at 6 p.m at northeast alabama community college in Rainsville, Alabama. It is totally free, but again, register for a seat at weather.gov slash H-U-N. That's the three-letter code for the National Weather Service in Huntsville. Again, you're not registering. It's no conspiracy theory about getting the citizens to sign up on a secret database. You're registering for a seat so the National Weather Service can get a bigger room if they have to, if more people are coming. So please sign up and get your seat registered on there and just be a polite human being and doing stuff like that. Coming up after that, a little bit closer to uh, mid-December Thursday, the following Thursday, not this Thursday, but next Thursday, December the 7th, that'll be McMinn County, Tennessee in Athens, Tennessee. That'll be taught at the McMinn County Courthouse. Register for a seat at weather.gov slash MRX. And for those of you in Chattanooga and Hamilton County, these are based on the counties around where people will find it most convenient to go to. If you live outside of Hamilton County in say Bradley or Sequatchie or Marion counties, there's nothing to say you can't attend one of these meetings, but just show up after you have registered for a seat. Again, it's totally free, so just sign up for it. But just sign up if you're going to be making those meetings so the National Weather Service knows they need to get a bigger room on there. That'll be held Friday, February 9th, 6 p.m. Eastern at CHI Memorial Hospital on DeSales Avenue. Again, that'll be next year. This will not be until February. So that's the ones we have on the books for the News 12 viewing area right now. There'll be more of them coming up in the course of the next several days and weeks. And please remember that if you can't make the meetings and you want to be trained on what it is like to be a Skywarn spotter and to actually take the course, go to the Comet MetEd site at meted, M-E-T-E-D, dot U-C-A-R, 
University Council for Atmospheric Research dot edu registered totally free again but at least you get to take the course online and wherever you need to or want to so you have that experience so again online training available the writers of this course do recommend that you take an in-person course like we just told you about just to make certain that you're on the books with the national weather service so they can call you if they need someone to uh, spot for something or to confirm something that went on that's the best way to do it but if you'd like to take it online great opportunity to do so and the national weather service in uh, morristown that covers part of the news 12 viewing area if you go to their website they have a virtual skywarn training course at weather.gov slash mrx so you should be able uh, to make that one and if you can't again there's to tons of online video out there for everything likewise again for those who are deaf or hard of hearing the national weather service in huntsville is having a uh, winter workshop for those who are deaf or hard of hearing it'll be held in huntsville yes it's not exactly our area but where the deaf and hard of hearing community is concerned we want to make certain everybody is included when it comes to weather of all types and this is a really cool thing for the national weather service to be doing to get the deaf and hard of hearing community members involved and to give them the information they need uh, asl and cart services will be provided this will be again december 12th uh, the time still tbd on this one when we know that we'll let you know but more information national weather service huntsville at end of, at weather.gov slash h u n if you'd like to participate in that or know someone who is deaf or hard of hearing so a good opportunity again to uh, get everybody involved with weather preparedness and weather safety so please again consider that and watch and see what goes on uh, there with the national weather service hopefully that'll spread to other national weather service offices uh, as well that'll be a good opportunity again to learn more there think that should do it for tonight i think we've covered pretty much everything at this time so uh, if you have any plans uh, concerns for the next several days keep it tuned to news 12 and we'll keep you advised as to what we may be looking for out there as always we post this to our main website wdef.com weather so if you have uh, any concerns look us up send me an email if there's something on here you'd like to see let me know if there's something on here that we feature too much of let us know on that it's we can't do this without you telling us what you think so if you've got something you'd like to share please let me know you can find me again wdef.com weather for more details on that to make this your go-to source for weather information out there weather overtime is our little way of bringing more weather information to you more than a three-minute weather cast could and to be again better at this than our competition so hopefully you find this at least interesting but if it's not your cup of tea fair enough let us know again we'd love to hear from you on just about anything out there i think that should do it so i'm going to go ahead and wrap up for now andrew harrison rick nyman and myself will have details on the rest of the day's events coming up on news 12 at 11. chip chapman is back from his vacation last week so we'll be able to see what he has to say on the forecast for tomorrow bright and early on tuesday morning starting at 5 a.m so tune in for more there and as always find me on all these social media sites most of them anyway uh, always throwing the game boy on there just to see whoever's paying attention so nice to have you along for the ride and thanks a lot for tuning in for the monday night edition of weather overtime stay tuned for more with news 12 on air and online and again, thanks for joining us for Monday night's edition.